Viewers, at 7 in the morning, when we brought you the wall-to-wall -wall coverage of the first phase, it didn't look as if the good people of Tamil Nadu were going to respond to repeated requests by Prime Minister Modi and his General K. Annamalai to come out and vote. But given the encouraging turnout figures that are of course still updating, it appears that some new voters have perhaps responded. Are they the voters that want change and are enthused by the BJP's message that provides an ideological alternative to the Dravidian cultural and philosophical outlook of the DMK and even the ADMK? Or are they DMK cadre mobilized by the well-oiled machinery of the DMK of that party to thwart the BJP? Let me tell you, when new voters have entered the electoral fray, the BJP has gained. At least, that's what we have realized from 2014 and the 2019 Lok Sabha experience. Let me elaborate, viewers, with hard facts as always. The BJP's vote share, in fact, gained by almost the same proportion as the proportion of new voters that cast their ballot. The total number of voters in 2019 roughly stood at about 89 crores, up 6 crores from 2014. In this period, the quantum of total votes that the BJP gained was also 6 crores, up from a little over 17 crores. Incidentally, in 2019, the Congress vote share increased. And it's also worth noting or pointing out that the non-Congress parties did better against the BJP in the 2019 election. So it stands to reason the BJP didn't entirely gain its increased vote share from the Congress or non-Congress parties. But let's not get ahead of ourselves, viewers. There's still about an hour and a half to go by which you will get the updated final figures. Somewhere uh, around 7.30, perhaps 8 o'clock is when we will get the updated uh, figures. But uh, let me tell you a little bit about what the Chief Electoral Officer is saying. He says that on the percentage of voting in Tamil Nadu in the first phase of elections, our voting percentage by 5% is 63.20 for the state, the highest in Dharmapuri constituency, 67 and a minimum, 57 in Chennai South. So Chennai South is looking like the laggard right now. Others in Tamil Nadu, the other centres, look as if they are about to close that gap. But first, let's look at the overall average of votes polled in Tamil Nadu compared to 2019. Let's put that uh, figure out on the screens, viewers. There it is, 62.08% at 5 p.m. 72 is what it stood at in 2019, so 10% adrift, but that was still 5 p.m. As you know, voting will go on for another hour, plus there will be people that will be queued up uh, in the lines, even as we speak right now, and therefore, voting will not shut till those votes have been cast or those voters have actually pressed the button. So, so viewers, there is some time to go. Uh, but let me deep dive the turnout in the seats where the BJP fancies its prospects in Tamil Nadu. There's Kanyakumari, 57.52 till about 5 p.m., which is about... Uh, 11.5% adrift from where it was in 2019. Coimbatore looks like it has experienced heavy polling, 58.36% and 639 in 2019. So that's only a, a gap of about 4.5% or so. In Ramanathapuram, 63.35 till 5 p.m. and 68, uh, that was the number in 2019. And that perhaps will either be equal or eclipsed in Tutikuri. 59.96, uh, almost 60%, and that's about 9% adrift from where it was in 2019. Sivaganga, 56.9, or at least 57%, and that's about 12% adrift from its 2019 figure. Uh, Tiruvenilvi, uh, again, viewers, 58, 67. Tirupur, 64, 73. Tenkasi, 61, 71, so a 10% gap there, a little less than 10%. South Chennai, of course, the big laggard. Here, as we know, the BJP has fielded Ms. Sondarajan, who was the governor till recently and was brought in. So that's a, a big gap there of 10% or so. 
Let's quickly check in with our reporters to get a sense of how the various protagonists are viewing their prospects on the ground in Tamil Nadu. Let's go straight across uh, to Harish Upadhyay, who's been there in Coimbatore for uh, some time now. And of course, was there all through the morning looking at uh, the election and how it was sort of unfolding. There's Purnima Murli with us also. She's live from Chennai. We'll come to them both right now. Upadhyay, Harish, uh, tell me, there is some talk right now that Coimbatore has seen heavy polling, but there is also some consternation on the part of uh, Mr. Annamala. He says that some of his voters have not been allowed to come in. The buses were sort of interstate or intercity buses were stopped. And also that a large number of voter list irregularities have surfaced and he wants a repoll in certain pockets of Coimbatore. Can you elaborate what's happening there? Well, uh, there are two, three issues uh, in Coimbatore, especially that the BJP has pointed out. One, they are saying that uh, there are voters who voted in the local body election and also in the assembly election. Uh, their names have disappeared. And uh, in fact, we were in uh, on the outskirts of Coimbatore uh, around afternoon and we did see a, a few cases where people said that they had voted for a number of years. They hadn't changed their house, but still uh, their names were missing. In fact, one individual came out and said that his name was on the electoral list. He had an epic card, but somebody else had voted on that name and it was a bogus vote left many wondering and how that was possible despite his picture being there. He was seeking uh, the election officer there to look at the CCTV camera that's present and act on that. So we've seen several such incidents and uh, in fact Anamala is saying that this is a discrepancy and it is more in numbers in certain polling booths and he's saying that there should be a re-poll in such booths. That has been their argument. Well, we've seen other political agents as well at multiple booths saying that uh, names getting deleted has been a problem and uh, this despite many of them voting the last few elections and not changing their residences. So we'll have to see how the election commission responds. But despite all this, as you rightly po uh, pointed out, the polling percentage perhaps will beat the last uh, 2019 figures, at least in Coimbatore. Uh, this is something that Annamalai has been talking about, that there will be an increase in polling percentage and the biggest beneficiary of that perhaps will be uh, the BJP. At the same time, let's understand the Coimbatore constituency has a large urban population, a bit of a rural population as well. So, will that polling per percentage be high in the urban pockets or the rural pockets? That's another dynamic that we'll have to see. And of course, we'll also have to see whether the ADMK actually undercuts the BJP there. Remember, viewers, that in the last couple of elections, the BJP has fallen minimally short of uh, where the eventual winner has been. So just a few percentage points have meant that it did not win that seat. I want to go across to Purnima now. Purnima, you're of course in Chennai. There it's interesting. There's central Chennai and of course south Chennai. South Chennai not seeing the kind of mobilization and the enthusiasm to vote, etc. Are we reading this wrong or do you think the numbers will go up once they are finally announced at around 8 o'clock and perhaps corrected and updated by the morning, number one. Number two, how's it looking? Central and South, how's it looking? Well, usually uh, the two constituencies in Chennai, uh, Chennai Central and Chennai South, always uh, uh, see a low voter turnout. Last time as well, it was below 60, uh, below 60 in South and Central Chennai. This time, as of 5 p.m., it was around 57 uh, percent. The last one hour is still crucial. Uh, what we are hearing is that by 7:15 or 7:30, uh, the 6 p.m. data will be out. Uh, so clearly. Chennai has always seen a low low voter turnout, uh, just like how Coimbatore also, uh, till about uh, 2021, where Coimbatore, South Chennai, Central Chennai, all these have seen low voter turnout. This time around, uh, we'll have to wait for the official right. data. But if you look at South Chennai and Central Chennai, they've always been a DMK bastion. But this time, because the BJP has decided uh, to field Tamarase Soundar Rajan, who has been aggressively campaigning for South Chennai, it is indeed a tri-cornered contest. And uh, Tamarase Soundar Rajan, confident 
confident that this time BJP will make inroads and she is confident that she will win even as the DMK maintains that uh, the party will sweep elections. So South Chennai is again a tough uh, battle this time because Tamar Se Soundarajan is also equally giving a tough fight this time around uh, uh, at uh, the DMK fort. And talking about Central Chennai, it's always been a DMK bastion. Dayanadi Marin from the DMK is confident that he will win with a huge majority. But uh, uh, this time around, uh, South Chennai seems to be yet another interesting constituency where it is indeed right. a tri-cornered uh, contest. All eyes on the 4th of June, but at the moment, uh, <laughs> Tamar Se Soundarajan rule, uh, not ruling out the fact that BJP will certainly make inroads. Well, viewers, in both Coimbatore and Chennai South, the Prime Minister personally campaigned. There were road shows, so these are really high-profile seats. And we'll come back to our reporters in just a little while, viewers. Stay tuned on this broadcast because we'll be updating those numbers. Those numbers really, some people say, hold the key. At least BJP says they hold the key. Let's open this up. Let's open this up because Tamil Nadu has seen a furious campaign. It has seen now enthusiastic voting in different pockets. And uh, Dr. Raman, you've been a cephologist. You are a very, very astute observer of trends. Are you prepared now to at least concede that there has been interest that the BJP has been able to generate? And you can see, especially in Coimbatore, where the polling turnout looks quite impressive, even as we still have a couple of hours of polling to catch up with. And other pockets also, especially those seats that the BJP thinks it has a chance in. Impressive numbers. Oh. Are you mm. going to recalibrate? Because you know that when new voters come in, usually, we can't read too much into this, usually the BJP does benefit. This looks like a real three-cornered contest here. Um, Rahul, uh, first of all, the voter turnout is not too different from last time, including in Coimbatore. Uh, as of 5 p.m., it was 61%. It is likely to end up closer to 70%, which is more or less what it was last time. So there is no major difference. There is no major surge in the voting percentage. If anything, across the state, the percentage may actually end up with maybe a point or percentage point or two below what we got in 2019. So there is that part. Let's get it out of the way. The second is, I have, I have been maintaining, not now, for the past year, I have been saying that the BJP will increase its vote share in 2024 and it will it has emerged as the third largest party in the state and it will get a double digit vote share now the question is about the winning of seats and this is where i have a difference of opinion i don't think that they're going to win too many seats this time but they will get about a 15 to 17 18 percent vote share because they also have the pmk which has a four or five percent vote so that the, the bjp plus the pmk will end up around 15 percent to 18 percent vote share that's not going to be necessarily enough to win them too many seats. It's very difficult to make a prediction whether they will win one seat or not. But beyond that, uh, you know, it, it's extremely unlikely that they're going to really win a significant number of seats. They are playing a longer game. So from their perspective, that's fine because the vote share going from 3 to 13 or 15 is pretty impressive in itself. Very interesting. Very interesting, viewers, that now... Dr. Raman says that, yes, there is going to be a double-digit vote share. Not now, no, viewers, not no. No, not I, no. I remember saying, that we had some... I've been saying it for one year. No, no, not I've one, no, not, for not one, one year. year. Dr. Raman, excuse look, me, when we put out... Excuse me, Okay, sir, so one second, one I, second. No, 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 no. Rahul, okay, okay, Rahul, okay. there are people from Tamil Nadu who have right. been seeing me say this for the last one year. Okay. I also, okay. I also said, had they not broken off the alliance with the ADMK, yeah. they would have won a very sizable number of seats this time. And I said that was a mistake. All of this okay. is on record. Everybody in Tamil Nadu Okay, knows well, it. well, I just remember a few things differently. But nonetheless, I'm not going to not let, let that become the center focus of our debate. But let me just, let me just get a sense from others also. Smita Prakash is there with us. Smita Prakash, look, we can cut it any which way. Had the turnout not been suggestive of enthusiasm, people have said the BJP is completely fizzled. The Prime Minister's visits there, 10 visits just this year, haven't brought the people out. That means the BJP is a complete write-off. It's probably not even going to make it to double digits. But let me just take you back to Bengal. 17-18% was where the BJP was with two seats in 2014 
And that was really the turning point then. There are parallels here because 2% here and there is where the BJP is right now when it was in 2009 in Bengal. And then you see it went up to 40% in almost, you know, very quick time, 10 years. So are we seeing parallels here? Are we seeing parallels that we are now discounting because perhaps uh, we have our own blinkered vision and we don't want to expand our horizon? Uh, look, yes, you can draw parallels between the West Bengal uh, situation and Tamil Nadu to a certain extent. The only issue is that in West Bengal, there was an ideology. Uh, uh, it was not ideology driven, whereas in uh, Tamil Nadu, it's an ideology driven battle. In West Bengal, it was if you want to see communism as an ideology, which uh, the Trinamool tried to take away, uh, then yes, at that stage. But when it comes to Trinamool versus BJP, it's not really an ideological battle all that much. Uh, whereas in uh, Tamil Nadu, it is totally ideology driven. On the one side, you have uh, the Dravidian ideology represented by both the DMK as well as the AIA DMK. The birthing of AIDMK is also with the Dravidian ideology. The BJP is trying to bring about a completely different philosophy, ideology, a uh, national politics which come, they want to bring in uh, into Tamil Nadu, uh, willy-nilly forcing Tamil Nadu out of a cocoon that it has been for four decades in that Dravidian space to uh, bring it out of that and make it part of the national mainstream. I'm only talking about it politically right now. I'm not talking about Tamil Nadu not being part of the uh, uh, mainstream as far as other issues are concerned, just merely political. So here it's it's a complete uh, different uh, laboratory that one can uh, see happening in Tamil Nadu. And uh, I, I tend to agree, uh, uh, you know, uh, the fact that BJP is here for the long run, 2024, not really. Okay. The, uh, the, it's like a, a, a hurdle race. So the first hurdle will be 2024 and 2026 is where they have their eyes on. A uh, lot well, of political capital well, well, that the Prime Minister has invested and it's certainly not just for 2024. Well, if it is going to be a wave election and 400 par is really the objective, then Tamil Nadu does matter because the hawa that is generated from that will, of course, enthuse cadres of the BJP in the South. It does set the tone. But there will be many people who will say that even the fight against the TMC was ideological to the extent that the idea of India was the one that was being sort of questioned. Uh, Anti-UCC, for example, is seen to be by the BJP an anti-secular approach to the idea of India, which the BJP believes should be actually protected, that we should resurrect what we lost to appeasement politics. Also, of course, uh, again, there is a common thread where Hindus, uh, according to the BJP in West Bengal are given short shrift and therefore there is a problem there. So I think there are parallels. Here again, the Dravidian idea is sort of anti sanatan and there is this sort of attempt at revivaling what the Congress had let go of uh, in the Kamraj years. So there are parallels, Smita Prakash. The only problem, of course, is whether there is enough, um, how should one put it, on, you know, disgruntlement against the DMK for people to move and what happens to the AIDMK at the end of the day. Shekhar Ahir, what, what do you believe? There are parallels between Bengal and Tamil Nadu that we are ignoring at our own peril? Well, you see, Babata does not represent any particular ideology. I mean, she has crafted it. First, she made it out it was an anti-left ideology, but, uh, but gradually the methods and practices of the left were actually adapted by Trinamool Congress. And things were made little more, uh, I would say, uh, more horrible. I mean, to put it in very plain words, whether it is uh, scientific rigging, whether it is intimidation of voters, or it is cultivation of a particular section of voters. And today, Mamata has acknowledged by releasing her manifesto on Ram Navami and taking out Ram Navami processions that you cannot ignore Ram. You know, on January 22nd, when Prana Pratishta was done in Ayodhya, Mamata and other Trinamool Congress leaders were saying that there is no Ram business in uh, Bengal, there is nothing here. 
nobody worships uh, prabhu shri ram in bengal this is the land of the shakti all kind of thing but what do you see the uh, the last 2 uh, 3 months because the decision to have the manifesto uh, released on rahul nabi was sent a message because she has realized that even though the uh, the by and large hindu voters in bengal have not felt so but the manner in which she has been cultivating a particular section of voters has resulted in a situation where the bjp's campaign has worked and above all this time mamata is facing another problem her core voters women voters i mean they, they have been very upset with the incidents like sandesh kali now coming to tamil nadu you see the tamil nadu dmk keeps on claiming that it represents dravid ideology hmm. admk also claims dravid ideology but what people are saying is these are only labels in terms of governance in terms of you know uh, good governance hmm. you are not seeing any difference because corruption has seeped into every aspect of governance they saw it during admk rule and they are now seeing it dmk rule and when we talk of parivarwad or the family rule it's not just at the top down in every district you find the ruling party functionaries their family members they are involved in contracts everywhere the same story now the question is what is the alternative that the people have okay. See, bjp bjp has not been arguing in terms of hindutva versus dravid ideology what it has been saying is to show that the prime minister has brought about a different kind of governance at the center whereas these parties who claim dravid ideology and take the name of great leaders like anna durai they have not for i mean they have not done what they should have done right why are the poor poor still not getting what is due to them okay this has been the this, this, of the other is campaign and tips campaign so this is the breakthrough moment viewers this could be the breakthrough moment uh, let me let me bring in another observer before i get the two political voices in uh, dr ranganathan the pivot to ram is civilizational the pivot to accentuating tamil non dravidian symbolism is civilizational there are parallels here do you think this is a breakout moment for the bjp in tamil nadu and do you believe that the vote share is certainly taking us towards that uh, good evening rahul and good evening to my fellow panelists uh, it's a great day for uh, the entire country it goes to votes um, three points here i think you are broadly right uh, number 1 yes the increase in vote share is expected no doubt about it and it was i think i would say the the long term vision as dr raman rightly put it of uh, the prime minister he is looking ahead 10 15 years possibly even more and then the fruits of this labor is going to uh, uh, come through in the form of maybe forming a state government or uh, having a substantial amount of uh, mps in the lok sabha be that as it may there are couple of points that must be taken into consideration bjp is going alone the reason for that is it sees itself as a david versus goliath story and always in a david versus goliath story you have nothing to lose when you go alone in this case i think it was a tactical move for it to not to ally with aia dmk and after the passing away of uh, late ms jay lalita uh the vote share substantial vote share of aia dmk is slated to come to the bjp point number 2 i do agree in a limited way with smita that while in bengal the issue was not ideological uh in tamil nadu it is being made into ideological uh, on the on the face of it yes i think smita is right uh but please remember that while in 2014 the bjp got two seats one of the primary reasons for it to get 18 seats in 2019 was that it itself projected the issue as ideological because it projected mamta rightly so as a giant appeaser of the minority and the fact remains that while in uh, tamil nadu the minor, the muslim population is only 6% a uh, uh, traditional community that doesn't vote for the bjp right. in bengal it is 34% so the bjp made it ideological by projecting mamata or didi as someone who is a giant appeaser of the muslims rightly so i i point to that and therefore it took a giant chunk of the the share that people were actually convinced that yes it might be true in this case i fail to realize what is the dravidian ideology is it that the aryan invasion took place other than that 
is it parochialism tamil all those things that the the dmk and aia dmk are proud of right now the bjp in tamil nadu is also proud of so you know there is not so much difference between ideology as well as uh, as far as tamil okay. nadu is concerned let's having yeah yeah okay let me let me bring in sanju varma both senior spokes people today mr dharani dharan and sanju varma important day viewers and you would want the best voices representing their side <laughs> so we have a, a good hefty panel here and and i i don't i don't mean it in in any other way i meant it as intellectual <laughs> heft uh, so before people start trolling me etc etc for you know what have you today the woke world never know what happens but let me just come out to you uh, sanju varma how do you see this 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 dr raman says is much ado about nothing and i'm sure mr dharani dharan will agree with him so you begin much ado about nothing let me put it to you uh, you know rahul i'm so tempted to say ab ki baar 400 baar teesri baar modi sarkar but uh, be that as it may let me come down straight to some hard facts hmm. you know i agree partially with suman sri raman uh, who i normally disagree with on most counts uh, yes uh, bjp might win two seats it may win four seats it may win six seats uh, we don't know uh, but on one thing where there is a broad consensus amongst various political pundits uh, sophologists and pollsters what have you is that the bjp in the south is going north it has nothing to lose we are moving north in terms of vote share and uh, you know the average that most pollsters have given the bjp is that the bjp is likely to see its vote share in tamil nadu at anywhere between 18 to 19% which is obviously going to be lower than the 26 or 27% that the dmk has been credited with by pollsters but it is higher than the 14 or 15% that people are willing to give credit to the congress for it is also higher than the 15 or 16% that pollsters are willing to give credit uh, for to the aia dmk so my first point is bjp will win a higher vote share than the congress than the aia dmk the second point is there is always a gap between gaining a critical mass in terms of vote share and then having the wherewithal to translate that into winnable seats now whether a 17 18 or a 19% vote share for bjp translates into two seats three seats four seats or six seats i don't know but i do know one thing that this is where it starts you have to first ensure that there is cross caste consolidation hmm. cross and that is where bjp steps in okay cross caste consolidation and i'll tell you why i will pick out just one very important seat tirunelveli where the bjp has fielded nayanar nagendran nayanar nagendran was somebody who was the electricity minister when j jayalalitha was the chief minister he was with the aia dmk in the 1980s he shifted to the bjp only in 2016 and the reason i'm talking about tirunelveli is because after his candidacy was announced i remember nayanar nagendran telling television channels that i have been only given one mandate by the uh, bjp top brass they told me okay. ensure that tirunel valley in 2024 is bjp's kanya kumari because don't okay. forget that you know uh, a decade back pom radha krishnan had won kanya kumari then every pollster said otherwise and the reason i spoke of cross caste consolidation is because tirunel valley is a very interesting interesting constituency you have scheduled castes you have scheduled tribes you have uh, the uh, thevars you have the nadars you have the marwars you have the obcs okay. and nayana nagendran comes from the uh, marwa community okay. and the second very interesting constituency which i want to point out before uh, being uh, you know i won't be too verbose is south chennai which you've been talking about yeah. in south chennai also don't forget that tamilisai sandhya rajan comes from the nadar community and it is said that south chennai has the highest concentration of nadars and brahmins in fact within south chennai t okay. nagar velachery and mailapur are brahmin dominant and given dmk's anti brahmin take on most issues in the last couple of years there could be a brahmin nadar cross caste consolidation okay, in well, south chennai which were once well, on family side well we 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 are going into the reeds we are going into the reeds yeah no hang on hang on just a minute let me bring in mr dhanini dharan in some the bjp says this is the beginning 
of the sun setting on the DMK. This is what she is trying to suggest, that a beginning has been made. And let me tell you, there are some numbers that are coming up now of turnouts from other states. Uh, you're beginning to see numbers being updated. So we'll come back on those numbers. But Mr. Dharani Dharan, this is, this is a promising start. Look, our poll suggested that at 17, 18%, the BJP might even bag five seats. Dr. Raman, of course, that day had a problem with that projection. Uh, but would you not say that this is reason to worry that 2026 will perhaps be a much tougher election that you, this would perhaps mean that there is a undercurrent of underconfidence in the DMK? Uh, we can't hear you. I think you uh, muted yourself. Could you unmute yourself, sir, please? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, firstly, yes. uh, thank you for having me on the show. Most welcome. See, if people want to dream, they can dream. Who am I to stop them from dreaming? <laughs> dreams are good, right? <laughs> but some dreams come true, but this is definitely not coming true. See, this election, the con this contest is between BJP and ADMK on who is going to get the number two and number three place. As a DMK spokesperson and worker, I'm very happy because our... B getting 39 plus 1 in Tamil Nadu plus Pondicherry is a foregone conclusion. That's what the grassroots says. Every poll, including the TV poll, has said that DMK is getting more than 50% note share. And the difference between DMK and the second largest party is more than 20%. And and BJP has and its uh, alliances, even in 2014, got 18%. BJP itself got nearly 6% in 2014. But then came 2016, BJP's vote share reduced to 2.86%. Then again, 3.4%. So that doesn't mean that if BJP is going to cross double digit this time, that BJP has gained traction. Even in 20, because BJP has alliances with PMK and several other part, several other parties. PMK itself has six percent, and the other the smaller parties which has might get about two percent. Then BJP, even if it gets four percent or four point five, is double digit, right? So what? And many of the smaller parties in Tamil Nadu are also dying. So that votes might be split between other other parties like Nam Tamil and BJP, which will be also floating. Maybe this time this will come, and next time it will shift. But basically, DMK's vote share has only increased. And ADMK, barring 3.3 to 4, 5% reduction, has remained constant. So I do not see DM, BJP growing in Tamil Nadu, point one. And, and second point is, DMK has grown stronger and there is no anti-incumbency as far as I can see. And I have also spoken to a lot of neutral people as well, uh, including journalists. Uh, even in the difficult constituencies, as per the media, they are saying DMK is winning with, uh, with a huge margin. That, that includes Coimbatore, South Chennai and Tirunel Valley. So this is an uh, easy election for us. You come and talk to people on the ground. They are all right. very, very happy with the schemes which Mr. M.K. Stalin announced. In fact, a member in a family in Tamil Nadu gets about 5,200 or 200 rupees a month. Right? The the grandmother gets 1,200 as pension. The mother gets 1,000 rupees as, as a monthly payment. The daughter who goes to college gets 1,000 rupees. And if they are all going in a government bus, they can save, they, they can save over 2,000 rupees. Add this all together, 5,200. Okay. Right. Well, this is helping. This is helping a middle class and lower middle class family, putting money in hands of the poor. As per Keynesian economics, if you put money in hands of the poor, the impact on the economy is three times higher. And again, if you put money in hands of the women, they spend the money on the on the family. The nutrition gets of the children gets improved, and the education of the children gets improved, and human resource capital of the Tamil Nadu also gets improved. So there's overall uh, focus on. Um, on improving uh, lives of people. That's why we also give morning breakfast. Why are we giving morning breakfast? Simply because it's thought okay, about. So, so you're That's saying that your guarantees, your guarantees are being appreciated and rewarded. Okay. Well, viewers, look, at this moment in time, uh, when we're just getting turnout numbers, and over the next two, three days, I might be able to sort of even see some of the Exit poll numbers, one can't, of course, bring out anything. One can't say any, anything really more concrete than, well, hope is eternal. And both sides are hopeful that they're going to do well. A quick comment. I saw two hands go up. I think uh, Dr. Ranganathan and Sanju Varma. Sanju Varma, go first. Quick comment. And then I want to bring in Dr. Ranganathan. Yeah. You know, Rahul, uh, the kind of overconfidence which the DMK today showcases is exactly... Uh, what the TMC uh, showcased in 2019. Okay, well, and you know, you know nobody anticipated. To, you yes, have also just, shown uh, overconfidence okay. by saying char so par. So it's, it's let okay. me let me come in. Rahul, you are not somebody who normally uh, interjects uh, when somebody is talking. I am a bit surprised. Nevertheless, uh, let me just finish what I was saying. Uh, you know, the reason why I talk about overconfidence is simply this: 
that even the most confident pollsters are saying that despite getting a 21% vote share, which is pretty decent in a state like Tamil Nadu, yeah. the DMK will not get more than 25 or 26 seats. Point number one. Point number two, taking off from where Dharani Dharan uh, spoke of about, you know, he's got 1,000 rupees, dete hai, he's got 2,000 rupees, he's got 2,000 rupees, he's got 2,000 rupees, he's got 3,000 This is precisely the reason Tamil Nadu is looking to knock on the doors of the Supreme Court. Okay, it's well, on well, the look, away. look, let's, it's let's, on the let's park bankruptcy. that aside. Sanju, one moment, one second. Let's park bankruptcy. that aside right now. Yes, Dharani Dharan wants to quickly respond. Look, even if they get 24 seats or 25 seats, they'll be very happy with that. I think they're not contesting any much more than that in any case. But yes, very quickly, Mr. Dharani Dharan. Very quickly, and then yeah, I want only, to bring yeah, in Doctor. We are contesting yeah. uh, twenty-two seats. Yeah, twenty-one plus one. So if you are yeah. winning twenty-five, I think it's uh, three seats more. But yeah. what I'm saying, game state versus alliances, you win forty. You are okay, 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 okay. Look, 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 look. Yeah, quickly, quickly, Dhani Dhan, Mr. Dhani Dhan, very quickly, please. No, no, that's what I'm saying. And again, giving money to poor and middle class does not mean it's freebies. It is targeted intervention. That's what okay. uplifts the society, right? Bo we know trickle down economics does not work. Okay, That's whatever it is, viewers, the fact that two principal protagonists... Okay, 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 please, please, please. We'll have to see now. You know, 4th of June is when we will know what really happened. Dr. Ranganathan, a quick one before I move on to the other very interesting part of this conversation. Yes. No, I just wanted to say because the wonderful DMK spokesperson talked about uh, one is free to dream. So I just wanted to say I too have a dream as a Tamilian. I have a dream where my state will welcome people from the north and not just the South. I have a dream where my state would welcome people who speak Hindi in addition to Tamil. I have a dream where the four ministers from the DMK government will be judged not by their share in lottery electoral bonds, but by the contact of their character. So I too have a dream. Okay, Mr. Dharani Dharan, <laughs> it's only fair that you respond very quickly. By the Dr. Way, Raman Tamil is Nadu also raising his hand. Okay, yeah, yes. yeah, see, by the way, Tamil Nadu receives the highest number of my, uh, migrants in this country. We receive about 2, uh, two million people, one of the highest in India, by, by far the highest in India. And Tamil Nadu is Vandare Valevaki movie, which means that we embrace people from all over the world. So in Tam there is no problem for anyone coming and living in Tamil Nadu, and people live in harmony. It's but only the BJP who says Tamil Nadu is anti other culture. Only other use of a specific language. We are against imposition, not speaking. Okay, well, you've people. had the courts, <laughs> Mr. Dharani Dharan, you've had the courts so bear down on you. You've had the courts, you've had the courts, you've had the courts remind you that uh, you need to be more tolerant of other people's beliefs. So you've also yeah. had that. And I think that's where Dr. Ranganathan was perhaps coming from. Anyhow, let me, let me quickly bring in Dr. Raman. Dr. Raman, yes, I, I thought you were pointing me to the exit, so but the... now I realize that you're making a point. So yes, please, what is yeah, the point that you want to make? Yeah. Yeah, the point that I was, I mean, it could be in some ways an exit as well in Tamil Nadu for uh, uh, certain um, parties. But anyway, let's let's not get into that. Now, the point really is that Tamil Nadu has one of the largest number of people learning Hindi in the Hindi Prachar Sabha. So, don't talk to us about impose. We are opposed to the okay, imposition. Okay, you don't have to become the... I mean, I disagree, you don't have to become the, I disagree with the DMK on Okay, okay, you, you don't have to but become the... imposition is unacceptable. No, no, now, now done. And now, look, I have to move on. Okay, now this will yeah. be endless. People will keep scoring points against each other, but you don't have to become really the uh, the bearer, the palanquin bearer, so to speak, of the of parochialism. It's okay, Dr. Raman, we all feel, you know, proprietal about our sides and all that, but let's not try to sort of, you know, over drum up the sub-nationalism, etc., etc. I mean, that, that also has its place. Uh, 